trees. This week on Kentucky Field. I was taught as a kid to aim small and miss small. I had to pay for my own shells, buddy. <laughs> We're in the woods with the best squirrel dog we've ever seen. Treeing squirrel go. after squirrel and getting a little history lesson while we're at it. Talk to him, girl. Good girl. Next, trappers are often the experts when it comes to nuisance wildlife. We're tagging along in western Kentucky to see how they're helping out. Then we're on Green River Lake, enjoying some cold water crappie fishing. Pretty fish. It's all next on Kentucky Field. Such a pretty fish. Beautiful. This pond is plum floated with frogs. They're everywhere in here. <laughs> yeah, this is a good fish right here. Really good fish. Come here, girl. Hey, boy. That's a big rabbit. Nice job. Yes! Yes! <laughs> My first musk. <laughs> Here it goes! Boom! Oh, oh. Wow, that happened fast. Hello, and welcome to Kentucky Field. I'm your host, Chad Miles. Join us as we journey the Commonwealth in search of outdoor adventure. Small game hunting is some of the most exciting types of hunting. And hunting with a squirrel dog? Well, that's about as good as it gets. What's her name again? Uh, her name's Ellie May. What type of dog is she? She's a mountain feist. A mountain feist. Mountain feist. They use their eyes, ears, and their nose real well. You might see them get up on their hind legs even. They'll wind and, and they, they just go, go get him, girl. She knows what she's here for. And that oh, dog yeah. immediately. Find you. a squirrel. She's, she's pretty accurate, this little dog here is, you know. Uh, I can't speak for all of them, but I, I like the I like the the breed just for the fact that usually when they tree there's meat there because you know they're not just smelling a track they're smelling that whole squirrel yeah it's up the tree look how she's jumping when she starts bouncing like that she's smelling something right there i think she smells one right now guys she's treed <laughs> look at her look at her biting on that uh, stump and that squirrel has went straight up into there. Look how excited and, uh, she is. Oh yeah, she's uh, she knows it's there. That's exactly where it's at. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl, Ellie. <laughs> we ain't gonna get that one. It's in a hole. Come here, baby. Right through there. That's a good girl. I usually just pack her a little ways. We'll go back up here and go through this gate. And, All right. And head up up this way here to the right. And she should have us another tree in no time. So. That's the way we're going. There you go. She's got she's on that tree, buddy, both both front feet. I see the squirrel. I just saw the squirrel too. The squirrel's sitting right up in the top. There's there's two. Is there two? I tell you what, Steve, you get in range where you think you can get a shot at one, and if the if the other one takes off and we had to shoot at it running, I'll be ready. I was taught as a kid to aim small and miss small. I had to pay for my own shells, buddy. <laughs> but my uncle didn't bring me from hazard, so. I'm real careful about the way I shoot. Ready? There you go. There's one. There's one more up there. Yep. You want to shoot it? He's right up in that same fork, Chad. <laughs> Told you that gun's dead on. Yeah, man. Good girl. Good girl. Nice job, yeah. Ellie, man. Good job, Ellie. Good job, buddy. You think they don't want those squirrels? I mean, I'm telling oh, you what. she loves it. Hey, we enjoy getting out here, and it's always good for the table. But you know what? That dog likes it more than we do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, look how yeah, excited she, she loves is. it. Yeah, she's excited. I believe she's on the right. Stay on this side. Well, let old Ellie May tell us where we need to go, huh? That's exactly right. You see right there with the fork? It's sitting right there. It's a gray squirrel. She's looking right at it. <laughs> Here, Chad, you come get the rifle and I'll handle the dog. I got a pretty good shot right here. All right, go ahead. Crack shot. Good job, there Ellie. There she goes. Good dog, dog good dog. It. Nice shooting, Chad. Right, thank you. I'll tell you one thing, you've got a squirrel killing combination with that little 1022 and Ellie May. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hey, Lordy. I'll tell you what, it doesn't get any better. You just turn the dogs loose, it's very social. Yep. We can sit here and talk and carry on, oh, talk yeah. about our deer season, and lo and behold, wait for her to bark, walk yeah, up there. Yeah, we talk about bear hunting, elk hunting, everything <laughs> else, and then directly you hear her bark, let's go. We've hunted everything in the state of Kentucky and got three squirrels. Pretty, <laughs> pretty good, that is pretty good. <laughs> hey, Lordy, good job. Where, where did this originate, using feist dogs? Even George Warson in some of his memoirs were talking about, you know, a feist. <laughs> Feist dog. That's what they used to call them. Uh, you know, it's been that far back. But a lot of your poorer people, uh, your early settlers in the mountains and stuff, you know, they they could have one dog for everything. So it was pretty much an all-around dog. So that little feist dog was easier to feed and care for. So you know, some families that couldn't afford the bigger dogs just took the smaller dogs and and they they adapted into all around uh, uh, hunting dogs, varmint dogs, you know, and, and now they're just specifically squirrel dogs. That's interesting, you know, there's always a good storyline behind something like this, and this entire breed of dogs, because they are cheaper to feed and can be trained to, to treat multiple species, mm -hmm. came out of the mountains because the people there just didn't have much. Some of your first settlers, uh, some of my people were some of the first settlers in, in Southeast Kentucky came in through Cumberland Gap and that way into Kentucky. You know, my daddy always talked about the old feist dogs when he was a little boy down there and stuff. You know, them getting snake bit and treeing possums and coons of the night and, and squirrels of the day, you know, and stuff. And uh, he loved a tree dog, and I guess that's, I grew up hunting with him, and that's what made me love the tree dogs. And I mean, I rabbit hunt and stuff too, and got them rabbit dogs and all, you know, that. Man, I've just, they just something about a tree dog, you know, going, being able to go to it. It's just so much different. It is, and you know, your dad loved it, and I'm sure that it, it a little bit brings you back to your childhood. Absolutely. I, I think she's fixing a tree. She's tree. <laughs> there we go. We have a little talk and tree a little squirrel. <laughs> it sounds like it was the beginning of a song. Yeah. Him, girl. Good girl. Oh, I see it. Going up the tree. It's up there in the top now. I can just barely see a little piece of hair there. How's that? Good girl. Good girl, Ellie. Good girl. I just shot at what I could see. Look how red that squirrel is down its back. Yeah, sure. For is. a gray. I'll tell you one thing. She was sure it was on that tree, and I was not going to doubt that dog. No, no. There's probably one over there, too. There it sits, right there. See it right there on the top? Right there it sits. Oh, yeah, sure do. See it? That dog was on that tree. Oh, yeah. And we spooked this one out walking to mm -hmm. it, and sure enough, again, that's a, that's a fox squirrel. So we've got a gray and a fox sitting here side by side. It is a fox squirrel. Yeah, I know she had a squirrel there, and then when you seen that other, but a lot of times that'll happen like that. Get ready. Coming down the tree. Get ready. Here, Ellie, here, 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 Ellie, here. Coming down, there you go. Get him, girl. Good job, Ellie. Good job, Ellie. <laughs> Fantastic. I tell you what, that is awesome. When you when you sit there and we walk in and we see a squirrel and we think, oh, that's what she's barking at right there. And I said, you know, look at that dog. She bites on my coat and everything. <laughs> look at her. Oh, God, I love that enthusiasm. <laughs> Good girl. We've got oak, scaly bark hickories. We've got tight bark hickories, big nut trees, the shag barks, scaly barks, same thing. You got red oaks, white oaks. There's plenty of big timber in here, and then you got these little locusts. That's pretty much their homes in there besides the nest, you know? Well, the woodpeckers have opened it up for them and just said, yep. here, live here. Yep. All right, girl, go get him. Go find a squirrel. Go get him. Go get him. She always takes off. When you let her go, she always goes right in front of you. And Perks him in your All you gotta do is, yeah. it's like you're steering her right this way. Like, you know, like a good lab dog, a retriever yeah. dog. Yeah. There she, she is. She's already treated up again. She's straight out. Yep. Straight out this ridge. I see it. It's a fox squirrel and it ain't very high. Here, Chad. Bust that fox squirrel right in the head. Look right there. Right here low. Oh, yeah. Through the cedar. Good shot. Shot, Chad. There he goes. Yeah, man, <laughs> good job. I think that's number 10. Good girl. Good girl, Ellie. You know, Steve, you like to shoot these fox squirrels right at the end of the hunt so you don't carry them all day. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> that's good thinking. <laughs> Look at there what Chad shot out to you, buddy. Look, Look at there what a squirrel. Nice. Yeah, man. I'll tell you what, I can watch that dog work squirrels every single day. The 
beaver is an amazing animal, but left unchecked, they can be destructive and extremely costly. There's a farmer's soybean field here. The entire bottom half of that soybean field is flooded. Beaver complaints are truly my number one phone call. Flooding timber, flooding crop fields, damming up creeks, uh, flooding roads, and uh, it's just been a huge monumental problem and gotten more severe over the years. And you were having some cities and some municipalities calling up saying they were spending a significant amount of money to clean this up so that the roads were usable. That's right, in Hopkins County, adjacent to Muhlenberg County, their road department spent over $100,000 cleaning culverts, regrading the road. Actually, I was at a Fish and Wildlife Commission meeting and started voicing, just talking to people. And Chet Hayes, president of the United Trappers, overheard me and approached me and said, we, we want to help you. You guys quickly advertised that there was going to be some trappers here right. to help out with any nuisance beaver problem that you had on public or private property. That's correct. And the calls started flooding. <laughs> they started coming in quick. We put out a little flyer that United Trappers of Kentucky were coming. It's going to be free of charge. And I've gotten over 55 property owners calling, wanting us to come help. And I'm still, I got one this morning. You can see this little leaf dam. It's just leaves and mud all the way across here. It's got this whole soybean field in back of us backed up and useless. So that's all wasted crop. But the beaver, when they're in here, they cross over at this little spot here. That's called a crossover. You can see where it's packed and it's thin. You can see where they've been sliding over there. And then they come right down here. And underneath this log here, there's, there's a perfect pinch point. And they've got to swim right through there to get under that log and into our trap. And you can see where we've got our body grip trap position down there. So here with Steven and Jeremy, you brought us out here on this piece of property where you've already got a couple sets out, correct? Yes. How many, how many sets do you have? Uh, we have about 11 or 12 up and down this stretch of creek here, about a half a mile. Both you gentlemen are uh, involved with United Trappers of Kentucky. Yes, I'm, I'm the executive director for United okay. Trappers of Kentucky. We're the largest trapping organization in the state. We have 250 to 300 members. All right, well, I'll tell you what, I'd love to get in here and let's take a look and see, see what we may have. Let's go see if we got one. All right. Well, I see our first beaver. It's uh, right there. So that's in a snare. Right? He's, yeah, that beaver's been snared on this crossover. Yeah, just like the previous uh, crossing that we just looked at. Yeah, right there. yeah. So, uh, yeah. Okay, well, let's go take a look. And that looks like a good sized beaver. Yeah, he's probably 40 pounds, I'm guessing. He might weigh 45 yeah. or more. He's yeah, a good sized good beaver. Size beaver. There was one beaver caught in, in Muhlenberg County here years ago and certified over 120 pounds. I think it was within a pound or two, give or take, of the world's biggest. I mean, it's not standing up. I see one of the support sticks, and we have a beaver. Uh-oh. They had a slide going up right here, pretty, pretty heavily used slide. I think they were going over to that pond. But they also had a narrow channel swimway here that was just perfect. So, yeah, the slide's right here. You're talking about entering some yes. tracks and stuff in there. Yeah, I see what you're talking about. There you go, that's when, that's the critter causing all this damage. Or one of them, huh? Yeah. One of them. <laughs> all right, there you go. Look at the teeth. It's amazing what one of these here can do, how much damage they can do with their teeth. And it's no wonder why they're such good swimmers. You're talking about moving some water. This is a dam we're coming up to here. Well, we may have a beaver in that one. That's a pretty good sized dam. Right here, we have a trap. And we got something in it too. So in a situation like this where you have a big dam and then a bunch of debris, it takes a little bit more study it just does. trying to find the location yeah. to trap. Yeah, and I imagine if those beavers come down or up, one place they gotta go is right there. Right there. And that's where the trap is. Because that's that's really the flow of water. 
I got one beaver. All right. All right. I knew you. I knew you'd have one there. Double. Double. All right. Boy, that killed that beaver quick, our Jeremy. It did. He never. He never moved, did he? No. And you can tell because it's up there on the front of the hibati. Is that why you he, say yeah. that? No, he just hasn't moved from the. The set. That's a pretty good sized beaver. I hate to tell you, Jeremy, but that won't be the biggest beaver. I know it. <laughs> I know it. That's bigger than any one we've caught today, though. Worked exactly like it's supposed to. Yep. So this right here is a perfect example why these landowners are wanting some of these beavers removed. There's supposed to be a road that comes down from this gate that crosses this creek and right here. Because the beavers have dammed this up, the water has gotten deep enough that there's no way you can get a tractor through there. So this is actually hampering his ability to farm his land. You ain't got the big beaver anymore, Jeremy. And so that thing looks like the tail on it's really big yeah, and wide. This is a good beaver. That's a pretty good sized beaver. Yeah, this is a good beaver. <laughs> and see, now that's the way it's supposed to catch. That right there is a perfect catch. Yeah, right by the head. Yep. That animal probably never flinched. This has got to help the situation. I mean, you guys are going to be here for a few more days, probably get a few more. This has got to help this farmer situation here. Yes, that's, that's what we're here for. I'll tell you what, I've learned a lot about trapping today. I've learned a lot about how much damage these things can cause when they're not kept in check. And uh, I appreciate you guys coming out and doing this Thank and showing me Thank the you ropes. For coming out. And hopefully, you're going to save this farmer, help him raise a little more money on his property. And you know, some of these areas, we got trappers out today that are doing this right on roads and near an airport. Hopefully they'll save the county some money too. Kentucky has many amazing lakes for crappie fishing. And the best time to crappie fish, well, it's right around the corner. Hey Chris, how you hey, doing? Chad, doing well, how are you, sir? I am doing good. Yeah. What a nice day for January. Oh, beautiful day, beautiful. First time I met you, we were at Cave Run Lake, we were putting habitat in the lake. And you were out there representing uh, some crappie folks to make sure that the habitat was in good spots for crappie fishing. And today we're on Green River and you told me this is a lake you like to fish quite a bit. Absolutely. Uh, my dad and I, we fish a lot of tournaments and we fish tournaments down here on Green River Lake and um, it's just a wonderful lake. It seems like you can catch them a variety of ways, whether it be spider rigging or single pole jigging or mm -hmm. uh, trolling cranks, just a variety of ways to catch them. So. We're not exactly sure how we're going to catch them today because, uh, man, We've been getting a lot of rain. <laughs> it's been a big change. Um, this is more like, uh, instead of Green River, it's more like the Brown River. It's the Brown River. <laughs> I think we'll be okay. We may manage to find some fish today. Well, let's get started. I look forward to All it. All right. I'm gonna learn a ton from you today because it's really been a while since uh, I've went out and located crappie and targeted crappie like this. Yeah, and we're kind of, th this is a real life scenario. We come down here today expecting mm -hmm. to fish something we fished earlier in the week and, uh, and caught fish on. Um, the water conditions were not ideal for that. It had turned muddy on us in the last couple days and now we're just, uh, we're on a search to find fish. That's what makes it fun a little bit. There's a little bit of hunting involved in fishing. It's locating the fish and what are they going to bite on. That's the key. <laughs> yes, sir. We'll see if we can do that. Let's do it. <laughs> Chad, what's been really the best color uh, for us in the last few trips that we've made has been this green and chartreuse. It's, okay. a, uh, it's a little jig made by Crappie Magnet. Leland's Lures produces this. Um, this jig head is called a double cross jig head and you'll see it's got barbs mm -hmm. offset on both oh, sides. Yeah. I just kind of thread that up there uh, on the jig. You'll see the hook comes out mm -hmm. uh, between the legs. And then I tie that on. Right. Um, this little product here, uh, we use a lot of these. It's a power bait, Berkeley power bait, crappie nibble and uh, I'll just place that on there, and um, that's what we use. Look at that. That's the way to start it out. Right there. Nice little Green River crappie. Pushing nine and a half, probably. All that's right. Keeper on Green River, Now, let's, let's talk about size and uh, krill limits here on Green River. Okay. 
Uh, Green River Lake is a nine inch size limit and uh, 30 per person, 60 okay. possession. A little over 10 inches. A little over 10. 10 and a quarter. There now, that's good fish. Yeah. Oh wow, that is the best one of the day right there. He'll go, he'll go 11, maybe 11 and a quarter. That's a pretty fish. That's a good fish right that there. Fish hit really aggressive. Don't take many that size to make a sandwich or a fish taco, does it? What was it about crappie that just kind of pulled you in? That right there. Chad. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's, that Man, what, that's a good one, too. That is what pulls me into crappie fishing. Um, you know, we started out catching crappie because they're just such a good fish to eat. You know, yeah. they're just yeah. wonderful to fry up and eat, and um, I got to enjoy that. And um, a few years back, they Crop USA had uh, some tournaments that were getting pretty close to our home, and mm -hmm. uh, we just decided we want to try to give a shot of uh, fishing in some tournaments. And we went through a real learning curve. There's a big difference between doing this and meat hunting, and then trying to catch you know oh, quality yeah. tournament size fish, and um, just over the years. Uh, this has got in my blood and just love it. I love it. <laughs> Can't think anything I'd rather do. So, <laughs> Look at there. This is a good one. Come out of that brush. I ain't as big as I thought. Heavy hung in a limb, but uh, he's going to be close. You know better than me. Is that going to make it? I think he's going to be a little shy. Maybe a little a quarter, shy. quarter inch. I'll just take you away. Yeah. There's a good fish. That's a good fish here. Yeah. That's a good crappie right there. Pretty good fish there. We may get 11 inches there. We'll see. 11 inches on the number. Crappie fishing in Green River right in the middle of January. Hopefully we get a mess of fish here. We've already probably already done that. And man, this sure beats being at home on the couch. from the eastern mountains to out west and the weather and the opportunities for lakes and the Daniel Boone National Forest. And I mean, you put it all together, we're pretty blessed. Yes, sir. Such a wide variety of opportunities for fishing and hunting and just mm -hmm. whatever your fancy is. Oh yeah, there we go. There we go, good fish. That's a nice one. Pretty fish, Chad. The the iridescence of the purples and blues in their back. It's just so pretty. What a bite. Now that's a good one. That's a good fish right there. Got that yellow on him. That's a pretty fish right there. I believe they're starting to, starting to feed up pretty good. That's where it's at. Fish will tell you where it's at, won't yeah. they? They'll tell you where the brush is. <laughs> Look how pretty these are. Pretty fish. Love catching them. Almost as so much as I love eating them. <laughs> Chad, I really uh, enjoy this time of year to get out. You know, it's uh, fun to catch them any time of year, but uh, when you catch them in the wintertime, it just seems like such a bonus. Oh, it definitely is. Yeah. We've seen one or two boats all day. The, the conditions could not have been more enjoyable. I would rather put on one layer of thermals and a heavy jacket come out here and fish and be really, really comfortable than come out here wearing shorts and a t-shirt and flip-flops and sweating the whole yeah, time. Yeah, burning that. And the fishing's better. Yeah. <laughs> Now let's check in and see who else has been out having fun in this week's Ones That Didn't Get Away. Here we have a nice deer taken by 11-year-old Olivia Ramsey, whose nickname is Yaya. This deer was taken in Shelby County. Nice job. Here we have Lucy Anna Kirkland with her very first fish ever, a nice bluegill caught in Fayette County. Here we have Andy Morris with her very first fish ever, a nice catfish that she caught with a friend of the show, Captain Rich with Kick and Bass Guide Service. Nice job. Look at this mess of catfish caught by Cade and Reed Wagner. 
These fish were caught at a Finns Lake in Burlington, Kentucky. Nice job. As deer season comes to a close, it's now time to start thinking about fishing. This is the time of year to get out those rod and reels and get them ready for spring. And remember, hunting and fishing on private property is a privilege. Always ask permission and thank the landowner. Until next week, I'm your host, Chad Miles, and I hope to see you in the woods or on the water. <laughs>